Okay, hi, I'm Josh Schmidt. Um, I'm from the Netherlands, and I'm going to talk about signal loops today. Um, this is an idea that's been discussed on the mailing list for quite a while, and I hope I can present you with a short version of what we've discussed so far, and um, hopefully help you understand what it's all about. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to prepare for this talk, so um, it might not go very smoothly, but... <laughs> Don't worry. Um, let's just get started. Okay, the history of the topic. Uh, signal loops have been around uh, for a long time. Um, there is airwise FRP and there is real-time FRP, which are two flavors that on which uh, some things have been published, and I found something si similar to signal loops in there. Um, when I first started talking about it, I didn't actually know about those. Uh, I just started a feature request on the mailing list after having some sleepless nights and scribbling lots of notes and thinking, wow, this is a great idea. And then I started the first post, and mostly Evan and John responded, wow, um, this is a lot of work. But <laughs> Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> so then we had this discussion of 30 posts to get through what it actually is. And I hope to be able to improve on that here today. But um, we found a problem in the first thread. So there, there were actually more threads on the mailing list. If you want, you can take a look at them. But they're mostly very theoretical. And in the end, the discussion stopped. And that's, well, that's why I want to do this talk, because I think this is a good idea, and I hope it will get into the language. So um, the goal of this talk is to inform you all and get you all to understand uh, what it's about, and uh, hopefully motivate you uh, why this is a good idea, and then discuss a little bit, because it's not finished. So what I'm going to tell you is uh, what signal loops are, why you should want them, um, a bit about the inner workings, because that's handy to know, and then talk about API possibilities, and mostly discuss API possibilities. Um, so what signal loops are, I will mostly present in with the inner workings. Um, it's a confusing name for state in an FRP program. Uh, we're really just talking about state. And if you look at the primitive we have in Elm now for state, that's fault P. And um, I want to expand on that. Um, so why should we want signal loops? Um, you can see it as an extension of the possibilities because right now you can't express every program you might think of in Elm. Um, if you take a simple game model, so I don't know if you've read about uh, Pong, um, but Pong can be summarized as kind of like an MVC model. I know it's an object-oriented programming term, but you have uh, a model, and in this model you just describe the data structures of what your game is going to be about, uh, what you need as state to uh, display the program and to calculate steps. And uh, another part is the view, which is just uh, showing the model. So the view uses the model um, just, just to make elements uh, show it on the screen. And then there's the other part, uh, which is called control. And this is just the game logic. So it also uses this model. And now you see the nice way of FRP is that there's actually no connection between view and control, which is actually a problem in object-oriented programming. Yeah. So MVC actually works better 
in FRP, which is kind of nice. <laughs> um, so control has a logic that just says, well, if you have a model and you have these inputs, um, then I can calculate the next step uh, by this function and that's the next state and that's what I want to view again. And so it's a nice model for games. But it's a high level model. So you have these three uh, modules, for example, and then you have a main module um, and that just sets the initial state and connects all the modules uh, with some input. Um, so when I tried to write my own version of Pong, and I called it Extreme Pong because I was going to do freaky uh, physics effects in them, I had all these plans. It never worked out, but anyway. <laughs> um, I was thinking, well, I want to pause and I want to pause on spacebar because that's easy. And then use FPS when because then I can just pause the timing and that's efficient. Um, but then I figured, well, if you're using Pong, then you have this field and um, you have two paddles and you have a ball and it's moving around. And if you if the ball misses the paddle, then someone somebody scores a point. But when somebody sp scores a point, do you want the ball to immediately start in the middle and start moving again? Or do you want to pause there? So at some point I thought, well, why can't I pause on game logic? And when you start thinking about okay. I'm going to pause on game logic, then suddenly you can't use FPS when. And this is where, this is my best example of what you can't do in Elm right now. Um, so, in my experience, and I don't have any good examples to back it up, but maybe you've experienced some of this yourself, is when you use Fold P to introduce state, uh, sometimes it feels a bit odd. Um, when you use large amount of inputs, that can be um, annoying because then you have to pack up a lot of inputs together or you have to merge them. Um, and when you have complex dependencies in your state because your state is actually rather large and you would like to view them as independent parts, then you still have to pack that state up into one single data structure with state to give it to full P. And that's annoying me a lot. <laughs> so um, I'm going to give you a code example and I'm sorry for the wall of text. Um, let's just start with the import. So I have this, these three Pong modules which are multi view control. Um, I have some fictional libraries that I could write just to make it easier here and I'm going to use the keyboard and uh, the left player has WASD and then you just use the, the Y coordinate from there and the right player just use the arrows and I'm pausing on uh, the spacebar and I have this helper function which toggles uh, from false to true to false uh, whenever this one becomes true. Um, then there's the time which is an FPS when we're not paused then try to get 60 frames per second. Um, in control there's this game logic uh, function that I just wrote and when I just wrote uh, write functions then I write and create. Um, and then I want to define this game state and this game state will need a full P and it will need uh, a default state which is from a model and it will use the game logic and it should get some inputs which I'm 
going to be over there. And then the main is just uh, show it. And I don't have paused in the game state. So that's why it's over there. So now let's see if we want to add those that input. Um, then here's the annoying part. So we have the the left player's input, the right player's input. We want the time step for the physics. Um, we want to make sure that it uh, only runs when when the time signal changes. So that's where the sum hold is there. Um, so it's really a trade-off because the sample arm can be easily used because you lift all of these inputs into one data structure. On the other hand, um, I don't like having being required to use this data structure. Um, also, I wrote this curry and now I have to uncurry it. Um, and well, I can still then use input, which is rather simple. Um, but let's continue. Um, these are the old class and time. Uh, imports are still the same, but I need the space. Um, now I'm using a normal FPS. Uh, still the same input, but now I'm passing on game logic. And only game logic for now, because it's just going to get more complicated if you also want to pass on spacebar. But you can, in principle. Um, now stuff gets more complicated because the state you want to keep is not only the game state, but also past, which comes out over here. And um, you don't require past in the game logic because you just want uh, the time function to stop when you pass. So um, I have this special fault P that ignores this second argument and only gives the first one to the uh, fault function. And I also have this unzip function which is just uh, like John described with uh, first and uh, lift on first and lift on second, but then put it in tuple again. So I'm just splitting from uh, a signal of tuples to a tuple of signals. Yeah. So does everybody follow this code example, more or less? Um, this is really the best I could come up with with why I dislike fault P. I'm, I'm always moving around, creating extra helper functions just to get around um, using state. And I guess if you make a lot of libraries, you can probably make most of this go easier. Um, but you can still not um, pass the time when, once you want to pass on game logic. So this, um, what you want to do over here is actually you want to keep the game state only when um, passed is false. So you actually also need to keep when over here. And then the, the folding function runs with every time step, even though the game logic already told the game to pass. Um, but there's no way to just stop the time. So um, on to the inner workings. So fault P is the primitive that introduces state. And the way you could see it is um, if you have a signal graph, then every node just, uh, I mean an, an input node as John described, 
comes from somewhere and has a current value. Um, but fault P um, also has a value, but it uses this value again in the next computation step. Um, so really every node has a bit of state, but that's just to accommodate the change and node change messages. And fault P actually uses its state um, for something more complicated. And I'd like to extract this, this state over here because um, it's used in a different way. I want to express that differently in the graph. Um, now, a signal graph in Elm has no cycles. So you can't just, I mean, you, you can't go down, but you can't go up again because that would introduce a cycle. And if you have cycles, then a change message will propagate and propagate back up again. And there, it just um, can get, yeah, <laughs> that's just the, the, the main problem. You, you can get indefinite calculations on just one event, and you don't want that. So uh, um, not having cycles is a really easy way to just say, OK, we're not going to have indefinite calculations. But um, I'm going to propose to break the rules. Um, I suppose that uh, signal loop and the signal loops in general are bad, but the signal loops that um, I want to allow are specific and they uh, allow for um, a safe way to execute it. So if you uh, let's have a look. Normally, if you say, well, we have a loop, then you might say it's, it's just a circle and there are some nodes in there. And there is no ordering. And of course, there are some things that go inside and some things that go outside. And maybe here's, here you have your main. So you know that eventually you want to get something here. And you know that there are some things that come in here. But in what order do you execute the loop? So uh, in general, even if you could guarantee safe loops, um, you shouldn't think of them as a circle, because then you still have the problem of how do I even execute this. So instead, what I would like to introduce is term that is the loopback, which is a special edge in an otherwise normal uh, Elm signal graph. Um, so let's see. Maybe you should uh, take the code example. So let's say we have Uh, the left player and the right player and we also have the space bar. So those are just your inputs. And then you want to toggle Space bar and oh right, you also have the the time. Okay, so this one you want to filter. Um, here's your pulse mechanism. Here's your filter. Here's your time. And you want to make sure that not uh, that the time signal doesn't always run 
so that you can efficiently pulse your game. <laughs> okay, it's going to be a late lunch. Um. So, this is going to be your input. Yeah. And now you want to put this into your stateful fault, fault P, which just does some logic. <laughs> and then goes to the view. So that's pretty much your signal loop. Sorry, your signal graph. And it has no loops. But um, now say you want to get something that uh, from the logic that also decides on pausing. What you really want is to just add an edge and merge that into here somehow. I don't know how. <laughs> Who cares? But you want something to go up. And this is the loopback edge. So the graph remains the same, except that there's a special edge that can move up. And it's called the loopback edge. And we can make this safe. And the graph remains the same, so you still know how to execute this. And uh, this is what the inner workings are really all about. Um, Evan and I ha had an interesting discussion on it uh, on IRC, so it's not on the mailing list, sadly. I did try to explain it a bit on the mailing list in diagrams, so you can look it up. Um, but the idea is really um, these all have values from, uh, from what they had last. And then there can be events that queue up. So if, if the spacebar is pressed repeatedly, um, then it goes to true and to false. And um, if this all goes concurrently, then uh, some events might queue up here because Togo is really slow. Um, but normally, in a situation where the system is a lot quicker than the events that come in, um, these queues then can become empty. So normal edges have queues that can be empty. The loopback edge is different. The loopback edge um, starts with a queue, and this queue already has um, a message. Okay, so you can see this as the base value that you give to fault P. If you write fault p, then you have to give it, uh, have to give the state an initial value, and that initial value is used in the folding function to uh, find a new value, and that's saved again. The same thing happens here with the loopback edge, only now it's uh, in terms of the signal graph, and is it's actually a message on the queue. And this message is just waiting here because as long as no, none of the inputs get anything, it just has to wait. So it's synchronized um, with the events that come from actual inputs and therefore cannot just run indefinitely in some loop. Um, and therefore it is safe. So that's really the mechanism. You already put something on here, and that's your state. So your state is suddenly visible in the graph, and it's, it's not 
a value in the default p node, whereas there are, which has a different meaning than the values in the other nodes. No, it's actually in your signal graph, and you can see it there. And once there, an input comes through, then it's used, and it moves around, and eventually something new is calculated, put here again, and only then can you move on. So this is also um, you call it. If you have multiple events here, so this is event uh, two, so you have these two events that come from over here, um, then one goes through and say this is also state one, then one goes through toggle. So this is still round one. Round one uses these two and combines them over here. This is still round one. You're using these, you move on. Now you have uh, all the different messages from round one. You calculate over here, you calculate over here. And this logic uh, finds a new value for the state. This is also still round one, um, even though round two might have already been calculated over here. But round two has to wait, because even though round two is over here, it's, it's not over here, because um, the filter requires this pulse signal. This pulse signal has the two over here, but it doesn't have the new state yet. So once this, the new state from round one propagates, then this one becomes two, and then finally you can continue your calculation. So you see that the loop um, still very strongly connects to one round of calculation, and the other one can't start until that round is complete and a new state is calculated. So this is uh, a synchronous loop in that way. So means that the value in the loop is always lagging one round behind, or it means that there's dependencies? Yeah. That we can <coughs> exactly. Which one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, I think it's the first one. The first one. Yeah, it's yeah. matched. Yeah, it's... Yeah. It's yeah. So if you wanted to write old P with this, you do lift two, which one value you want to write in this case. So... Yeah, old P would be definable as just um, taking the default function and just lifting that fault function over your normal input and um, there is this output, this is A and this is B and this one also comes back over here with the default value already set on the queue. Yeah, that was just to combine it with the already, yeah, the puzzle. So at that point, you, for your purpose here, yeah. you could be a simple problem, right? You really want to break the signal graph for a period of time. Yeah. So, so, so it's kind of a control level on the signal graph. So yeah, more or less. Graph. Yeah. Uh, but you also view that as a place where you actually use whatever values are coming in, more complex values than just on and off. Right. So it's conceivable as well. So I think that's conceivable as well. So you could imagine so 
one use case which kind of comes from your example is like you have a courier function and you could just say, hey, lift four, and the fourth thing is the loopback. And so suddenly you have fold whatever you want, fold P7 yeah. with the system. Exactly. Um, and then you also have, let's say, lift, lift, lift. So if you want to do some pipeline integration, you make that explicit. But So, yeah, I think this, this will improve modularity in L. I think because um, you can more freely specify where you update the state and where you use the state in the program, um, you can more easily just make smaller blocks and not have to combine them all before you put it in fault P. So fault P is just a very simple loopback, whereas what I'm after is a, a complex graph, right. uh, like the one with filtering and, and filtering and whatever, and just put in a loopback after you already thought up your program. So I was actually coming to that. Um, I'm not going to display the note because that's for later. Um, where is it in my slides? We, can, we kind of messed up the, the order. <laughs> but, um, no. Okay, I can't find it. Um, what were we talking about? Increased modularity. Um, okay. I don't know anymore. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so one last note. I want to be critical about um, what I'm showing to you here, because these, I think these loops are a nice mental model, and it's, I've also shown you how, how this can be implemented. But on the other hand, this loopback edge is really very different from a normal edge, not, not only because it goes up, the signal graph, but only, it will only have zero or one value in the queue. So it's really just. I don't think that's true, actually. It is, because the timestamps of the messages well, have to be exactly at one point. And also, it can't ever get more than one value in the queue, because in order for something to come down the graph to the point where it would loop back, it has it's to go to, it has to oh, get that. You're up. right, assuming it depends on itself. Yeah, yeah. assuming it depends on itself, and the only time that we would actually use a loop is that it's depending on itself, right? Yeah. Otherwise, it, it, we would have no loop, right? So the times that we would actually need a loop, it's always only going to have one. That's true. Okay. <laughs> so if you have a if you have a loopback structure, yeah. And in the case that it actually does the back picture, that's true. Yeah. In the case that it doesn't, and you use it at the edge, it's normal edge. Yeah. Uh, it could fill up. I don't think it's bad. I think the compiler should just ban it from ever not depending on itself. Yeah, yeah if and that would be in types. Or yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 so that's really the problem. So, okay. so we, we figured this out. Mm -hmm. It's going to work, but how do you expose it to the user? How do you give the user a nice API in which he can't do anything wrong? Because that, that, that's the nicest API. Um, and yeah. That, that's really one of the problems. So, why is that an undesirable property to have multiple things in there? Because if they're all implicitly timestamped, what's, what's the problem if that DAC line has, is queuing up? Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, I don't really understand the question, but we'll talk about it later, okay? okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, because I think, People want lunch, and we should yeah. finish. <laughs> and, <laughs> we, yeah. and we can also postpone discussion to after lunch or whatever. Um, for API possibilities, I mentioned at the start of my talk that there's Airwise FRP and there's real-time FRP, which already have these kind of things. So Airwise FRP is like the automated library that we have. So, 
has these boxes and eventually uh, and you can combine these boxes into a single one and eventually you can hook a signal up to it and the signal will come, up, come out and otherwise it's just computation and the way they figured um, they would implement state was they'd say well let's have a box and this box has has two inputs one of type A and one of type S and it has two outputs and one is of type B and the other one is again of type S and then we just have a loop function and all it does is it just connects this one and then of course you need the starting state so you need the default over here but then here's your loop back There, there is no def there, there is no default. I know. It, it's, it's using uh, um, how do you call it? Fixed point um, calculation. And somehow, um, I don't <laughs> really understand fixed point uh, completely. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> in some cases I do understand how it works, but in this case I don't, and I don't know where the default comes from. Yeah. But, but they use that and suddenly it works. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> so, so that's how it works in AR4P. Um, so that's why I wrote this new fault P, which is just not a pure function, but a function with signals. And I'm not sure if it should be a signal of pure function or like this, but anyway, this is one way to go. And the nice thing about this API is that um, you don't, you can't really control the loopback, so you're sure that the loopback will be used to actually loop back up the graph and not down somewhere. Um, on the other hand, you still need to pack up all the inputs usually, and well, all the other not nice properties that I talked about. Uh, a full P, they remain in here. Um, so real-time FRP does something else. Um, they allow recursive definitions. And, <clears throat> well, that's a bit of a problem in Elm because even if you would allow this for signals and um, make it work, then still for normal values it would, you can't write recursive definitions, so that would be weird. It's, it's also weird where the, the model they want in real-time FRPs where you can... It, the graph itself generates itself as it goes, so they want the infinite. Really? Yeah, so like you were, when you define uh, 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 like an integral of something, um, perhaps it depends on its previous value, it's causing itself to update and you're getting these values through very quickly. Okay. So they were, that was a continuous uh, system, and then the event-driven one, which came after, said, okay, let's make this discrete. And then in like footnotes, they were like, this seems to be compatible with loops. And like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so what I got from it is that they have this delay function, and that just sets the default. So um, you take a normal signal, and you push this one in front of it. And this is your, your default, your state, uh, that, that you push in front of it at the start. And then you can use it um, before the place where it's defined and make it a recursive signal. So, yeah, so then, then with the recursive definition, they, they make the loop back. And with the delay, they set this default. Exactly, exactly. So that's the problem with this thing. And so, and then on the other thing is that, well, do you really want to be able to do recursively define signals? Uh, because values you can't def define recursively, and you have to use the delay. So if you forget that, then you get compiler warnings again, and so, oh, hopefully right. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> because it's going to be hard to check, probably. So. 
those are the two different flavors that already introduced loops. So this is an old idea of Evans to use records. Um, so this is the default value. And <coughs> you can just use it with, with receive at some place. And you can update it with send. So what you want, if you define fault P, Um, then it takes a function and it takes a base and it takes an input signal. Um, and then you just let the state be B. So this is a record now, this state. And this record has a send and a receive. And then you can, let's see, you can give the function its input and, okay, I'm running out of space here. Um, <laughs> so, what you want is you want to give the function its input and the last state, which you use receive for, but you also want the new, uh, newly calculated value to go to the state, so you use state.send. And, the, and then this whole thing. And state.send sends it up again to, to update the state and just returns it to. So that's your fault P then. Um, so the nice part is that um, things are decoupled. You can just re use receive somewhere in your code and then Something that depends from that can finally use send. Um, the problem is again checking if this send is actually used on a signal that's dependent on that receive. So again, if you want to check it, um, they look like normal, like normal functions in records. Um, another thing is you can send, you can use send multiple times. And what does that do? I mean, do you merge it then? But how, in what order do you merge it? Because a normal merge, you give multiple signals and if, they, uh, of, if all the signals update at the same time, then it chooses the leftmost that you've given. But um, when you write Elm code, you can really just put it in any order. So, do you take the ordering of the code, or what? And so that's, that's also a problem. And I'm not saying it's a, it's a really bad idea, yeah, but... But you maybe have to put like a merge priority on the set, and like, okay, so this is first priority, this is second priority. Yeah, second and, and, like and, and do you even want to allow it? Do you want to yeah. be able to specify merge using different sense, or do you just want to disallow? So you could detect um, multiple uses of send that would actually manifest in the signal graph, and you could say, oh, we put nodes in for this twice. Yeah. That's not cool, but... Uh, yeah, so <laughs> designing this API is really, is really tricky. So I was thinking more about using some kind of special syntax. So that's, that's the lower part, and this is not perfect, but just as an idea, um, it's, it's close to this. I mean, you have a start with that gets a default value again, and then you just get a state. And the state variable is just there, okay? And the, the state variable you 
variable you can use using this function. I call it last because that's the la you're getting the last state that's known. And this last state just turns it into a signal and a signal you can use again. And now to update it, instead of send, I have this saved as. And because it's special syntax, you can more easily say, well, why are you doing this twice on the same state variable? And maybe it's a, it, it's a little more obvious than, than that you just specify, well, save as can't be used twice on the same state variable. And people will more likely accept it. Um, the problem is, um, where, where can you put these? Can you put these anywhere where, where you can say A is B? Right. And, then and, and So, <laughs> even, even using special syntax, this is still really hard to expose to the end user. S, 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 would be S would be the signal and ST would be the state. Sorry. Oh, S would be a signal? Uh, yeah. Okay. I thought it was just so a value. No, no. Okay, okay because then, then you would have to... Then it would be yeah, that, that would be bad. Okay, sorry, that, that's not clear from the slide, sorry. And now this, this is a signal right. which depends somehow on a last call gotcha. on this state variable and it updates the state variable. Gotcha. Oh, so S is what has to be unique across your entire program and ST is just a name you have to give it? Um, no, 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 okay, so it's a like you're right. Okay. So, uh, ST is something you create with uh -huh. a function call to state. So this this is a state variable that starts with with one. Can you start with. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm not even. And so using for my own signal name. that you happen to write in your program, you can save it as that name. So it's turning a signal into like. Mm -hmm. no. Can you? Yeah. Can you throw the graph representation? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 For example. The second syntax. Uh, yeah. Um. Okay. Can you repeat the important pieces? Oh, yeah. 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 So in the second one, what you do is you get fault p is a function over a default and input signal, and this is, well, then you need a state, and I'll call it st because it's over there too, and this just starts with the B. Um, okay, so here's pretty much the problem. Now you have to say, well, as a result, I'm going to calculate uh, the function over the input signal and the last state. This is why I like last, right. because uh, you can easily read that. Um, and then I figured you uh, save as would not have a result, so you'd have to write it at the same place where you'd write ASB, so you'd write it over here. So you write save um, the result as the new state. And then you just say, well, this is the result. So it's it's pretty close to this one. Only here the send just has a result, so you can just use it in the in and you don't have to save the result as an intermediate. So in this world it's conceivable that a compiler that the the record is conceivable that a compiler optimization would get rid of it because it says, Oh, we don't actually end up hooking up the signal. But perhaps it's useful. So if it turns out it doesn't depend on itself, then just turn it into a normal one. Yeah. Other
otherwise do the Okay. So like the yeah, I, I'm not sure if you should just allow it. Maybe you should at least warn about it that, that because, yeah, okay, uh, in, I mean, it's a syntax that's used for introducing states and and the compiler finds out, finds out that it isn't actually used to introduce state. That's interesting as well because so this record also is like kind of like tricky. That record is imperatively created. Yeah. Um, and in this case, you don't have to. Exactly. Yeah. I I also liked that yeah. that you can see in types that there's state. And yeah, Very uh, imperatively created things. I'm not a big fan of. I, yeah. I'm, it's it's the well, best no solution we have now in, yeah. in in the graphics input library. But I'd also like to find a, a better API. But perhaps the the problem with these APIs are related. Yeah. Uh, it's it's. And you don't want to introduce special syntax for everything. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I think state is fundamental enough to introduce special syntax, but I'm not sure if this is the right way to go. I'm just showing it as an idea, but maybe you have a better one. I hope so. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> um, but yeah, so this presentation has been really great, and I have been skeptical of this, and this was a very clear presentation that's been very helpful. And Thank you. Idea. Um, so yeah, thanks. I, like uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if that's the end. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I to make sure. Oh, I, I just uh, thought of what I forgot. Um, this way of introducing states uh, with um, with a decoupled um, declaration and use um, also allows you to uh, write a modular program and then as an afterthought introduce a state. Mm -hmm. Because you, you don't need all the helper functions to make it fit into that fault P. And you can just use filters wherever you like. And that still works. Right. And then you can just think, oh wait, and that needs to be state. Okay, let's define it. Link it up. It's done. And I really like that part of, of this API, is that you can just forget about state and then when you remember, you can easily add it. Or when you already have a program and you're designing the new version and you need some new state, just add another state variable and there you go. I think what, what it works. I, like it. I think what needs to be formalized is exactly what are the rules with this linking, but yeah. I think it's definitely in the right direction. Okay. Does anyone have any questions or well, let's, let's, ideas? Let's talk a little or, more time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's fine.